Hello everybody, uh, this is just to show a test of this power supply that we're using on the HP 8920 radio test set. We've repaired it with the best we can, but there is a, another fault on it which I'm going to demonstrate in a moment, which I can't get to the bottom of. According to the Artisan manual, technical information, uh, the voltage outputs that are referenced here I've got a current specification, <coughs> excuse me, got a frog in my throat. So for example, um, if you look at the 5 volt rail, it's got a current range of 1.5 amps to 5 amps. The 14.4 volt rail is half an amp to 1.85. The minus 14 is half an amp again to 1.25. The 12 volt rail is 1.2 amps to 2.5 amps. 43 volt rail again only small current for that one so what I've done I've got a resistive load which I've set up on the uh, bench uh, which just comprises of some big power resistors which give approximately on the 12 volt rail a 2 amp load now the fault with this power supply is even though we've done all the repairs um, on the circuit board to restore it back to its operation it's not performing as it should be because at 240 volts input when we load it with these currents that's in the regulation and ripple specification the output voltage which is specified in this column here isn't maintained so for example if I were to give a um, say a 1 amp load on the 12 volt rail here and it's specified 1.2 to 2.5 amps it should regulate the voltage between 11.54 to 12. Point. Four, six. That's not the case at 240 volts in my case. It drops to about 8 volts at 2 amps. Um, 1 amp it goes up to about 10, 11 volts if that. So it's poor regulation. Uh, the 5 volt rail though is okay but it's just the uh, minus and plus 14.4 volts and the 12 volt rail that has a problem. Now what's strange about this power supply is if I wind the variac down here to 110 volts AC input up to about 250 volts anywhere between there it, it's meant to work I think it's 90 something volts up to 240 volts it doesn't give that regulation throughout its entire operating input if I give the input 210 volts AC input instead of 240 volts the power supply works wonderfully it keeps its regulation um, everything works just wonderfully however increase the voltage of up of, above about 220 volts AC input and then suddenly you can hear the switching transistor do like a funny squeak it switches frequency and the regulated output voltage drops to you know 8-9 volts regarding uh, a 12 volt rail with one point something amp load on it and what happens is then the output voltages drop off quite sharply with just a slight load on them and if that's in the test set the test set actually powers off I've put this in the test set and with 110 volts input the test set powers on perfectly because the test set needs about one half to amp load anyway and that's what it presents to the power supply so what I've done I've set up a test here which I'm going to show you so you can see the fault yourselves I've got my scope meter here which is on the 12 volt output which is going to give us a 12 volt DC or whatever voltage is coming out of the 12 volt rail. This meter here has been set up on a part of the circuit which goes into the oscillator. So CR11 which is a diode here which supplies these transistors and this part of the circuit, the voltage reference IC as well for the oscillator circuit and quite a lot of other parts of the circuit and um, that is where we've got that meter attached to on the input to that um, and we've got the Rigol scope up here and um, that's attached to the output of the transformer on the secondary side uh, we have a sample taken off a secondary a 12 volt coil down to a feedback circuit amplifier which then inductively couples the output if you like to the input so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you first of all at 110 volts so I'm just going to turn that up now 110 
it's now switching it's on so the 12 volt rail as you can see on there is 12.54 volts this is at roughly a 2 amp load uh, on the voltage into the oscillator we've got 9.2 volts and on the Rigol scope there we've got approximately uh, 68 kilohertz in frequency and uh, we've got a nice waveform now first of all I'll show you what happens with the fault if I begin to wind this up now to 110 from 110 volts upwards we can start to see that it keeps its regulation quite nicely and then suddenly around about 256 volts um, DC uh, which will be on the reservoir caps there look that's it it's just gone it goes down to about 10 volts so if I wind it up to 240 volts which is about here there's nothing it drops down to quite a low voltage which is the point where the test set turn off if I bring it back to 110 you can see that the the thing's working just nicely so if I have a look at the supply voltage to the oscillator on the right which is currently reading 9 volts with 110 volts AC input if we begin to increase the voltage up to around about 200 volts now AC input this is about 210 220 and there we are look we've got 18 volts supply so in proportional to the input from the AC mains which is here the AC mains coming in through the bridge rectifier two big reservoir caps via the 470k down to the junction of this capacitor arrangement when it's oscillating it provides a power feedback via that uh, diode so we can see that obviously as the oscillator is working harder switching harder because of the input voltage is increasing the voltage here would increase which I can understand however if we have a look at the Rigol scope if you keep your eye on the frequency we'll notice now begin to increase the voltage we've got about uh, 66 kilohertz in the top right when I increase the voltage we're going up to nearly 200 volts now still maintaining good regulation the frequency is increasing all the time as you can see and then bingo we've lost it and if I keep going right up to 240 volts AC which is there we can see we're nearly 100 kilohertz can't maintain the regulation and then we come down again 110 and then we're back normal we've got good regulation now I don't know if you can hear this but there is a on the IRF transistor there if I just turn that up Till it trips no, it's not doing it now you can hear it sometimes make a bit of a squeal so you know you get to a threshold and then suddenly with a 2 amp load we, we, we go from 12 volts which is what it should be nearly to 11 and a half down to 10 volts and obviously if I increase the voltage up the voltage changes as well slightly so it's voltage proportional and I just can't get to the bottom of it it's just one of these really weird strange faults I've no idea what's causing this fault now if we remove the load on the output so we remove the load there on the 12 volt rail and we increase the voltage up to 240 volts you'll find that it, it maintains its regulation so I've no idea what's causing that um, but as you can see that's the kind of faults that sometimes we get with such small power supplies they're very difficult to repair sometimes you know I'm very envious of those that can just change just the capacitors and bingo it works and um, this is not the case in this in this particular fault but you've seen for yourself now what happens so what happens is if you give the test set a 240 volt input the test set won't power on the moment you turn the input voltage down to 110 volts AC the test set powers up and works fine so there's something weird I don't understand it and it's it's got me 
So, have a look in part three at my final resolution of what I'm going to do because I spent a lot of time on this power supply and, uh, you know, I've repaired quite a lot of power supplies in the past, switched more power supplies. I'm quite experienced at, at repairing them, but this particular one has got me beaten, I must admit. So stick around for part three and uh, we'll see what I finally decide to do.